Then, let's go to biblical literacy. Um, I want them to have memorized major portions of character building scripture. I want them to know the major sections of scripture, books of the Bible, why each of the canonical books is included in the collection. I want them to have a biblically based theology that comprises all traditional emphases. So, this is what happened. My eldest son, Caleb, I asked him one day, he was age 8, and this is before we began a, uh, our dinner table thing. But at age 8, I asked him, uh, son, how many, how many persons are there in the Trinity? He looked at me and says, I don't know. I thought, oh, my. I was so appalled that a professor, a theological professor's son, at age 8, didn't know God in three persons, blessed the Trinity. I said, I, I, I have failed. I have failed. Failure was over that week. I went into my office and I wrote Hidden in the Heart. It's a catechism written for Caleb because I wanted him to know some stuff. And I got about, uh, I've got 129 questions I wanted him to know. And I've got all these scriptures that he was going to know. Uh, today he knows, as the whole family does, because we review section by section this catechism. They all know the catechism. We review it every meal to this day. every One meal a day, lunch or supper. Um, he knows how many persons there are in the Trinity. He knows a whole lot more besides that, too. But he knows, we all know, about 500 verses of Scripture together. Uh, that is by no means a lot, as you probably well know. Some of you have known whole books of the Bible. But 500 verses of Scripture together. We chose those scriptures for a reason, for their spiritual life. Uh, but this thing is really critical to what we do. And uh, tomorrow, maybe I can just cover a good bit of this day and I'll cover rituals tomorrow. But this whole thing about rituals is huge. Uh, you need to have regular things that you do that inculcate your values and your worldview onto your kids. Rituals is something you do regularly, right? Uh, might be shaving. I shave regularly. Every morning I shave. That's a ritual. Not much of a ritual, but it's a ritual. Rituals, as far as Christianity is concerned, teach the values of the faith. So, what we did is we start saying, uh, as far as we know, when the Jews were exiled and they were no longer going to be in Jerusalem, when they fled for their lives, they had to make a decision. We have no more temple. Really, we don't even have a, a place to worship at all synagogues or otherwise. So what are we going to do? They're fleeing for their lives. They're running away. They're spreading out all over the Roman Empire. And so they decide, this is what we're going to do. Rabbis, priests decided, we are going to tell everybody that their home now is the temple. Mini temple. And that the dinner table in that temple is the altar. So the dinner table is the altar. And your home is the miniature temple. And the priest of the family is going to be the dad. So we got everybody's a priest, every home's a temple, every dinner table is going to altar. So here we go. And at that altar, that is where they decided we're going to bless our kids, we're going to sing songs, we're going to teach them the Torah. That's where it happened. So I picked up on this. I thought, hmm, maybe we ought to do something like that. So can I just show you real quick what we do? Uh, it goes like this. Dad, and I want them to hear Dad do it because Mom has read to them their whole life and done a great job. And I did some, not nearly as much as she did. I want them to hear Dad reading either a missionary biography, some kind of Christian witness, or the Bible itself. And the Bible itself doesn't mean the Bible. It means some rendition of the Bible. So for right now, we're reading the book by Walter Rett Wengren. It's the Bible as a novel. Very interesting. Gives you some fascinating insights and they got to know this isn't the Bible but most of what it says happened kind of the way it says so I read to them and then right after that one of my kids and they decide amongst themselves who will do the catechism so they will open up and do a section of the catechism led by one of my kids now, then we'll sing a song a hymn then we'll do an Old Testament passage. Then we'll do a New Testament passage. 
Now, the Old Testament, th these tend to be rather lengthy. Uh, Old Testament passage would be something like uh, the Ten Commandments, all of them. Word for word, all, all Ten Commandments. Not just the commandment, but everything that goes after the commandment, like the Sabbath one goes on for a while, right? So we do all that, or like 1 Corinthians 13. That would be some examples. we got some examples in here, in the Catechism. Uh, we've got... So, they do Dad Read, Catechism, Song, Old Testament, New Testament. Then we do a creed. Now, let me put this up here. A creed. And so, I want them to know the great creeds of the faith. So, they will, we will say the Apostles' Creed, or the Nicene Creed, or the Athanasian Creed, or we do a major quote from John Wesley, or a major quote from William Booth. A major quote from somebody, and we have a number of these picked out. I think I put most of those in the book. So, we do this, uh, a creed. Then we do a famous prayer. Have most of those in the book as well. Then I have, we don't do confession. Don't want to cause indigestion. We just do adoration, thanksgiving, supplication. For our, and they're just, adoration is two sentences. Thanksgiving is two or three sentences. Supplication, two or three sentences. And uh, because we have a large family, I don't make them all do it at one time. I'll just squeeze this hand, I'll squeeze this hand, and they know we start it off and we go down that end of the table. When we start off here, we go down this end of the table. Three, three of them usually pray at a time. So this is our ritual. Let me tell you how the catechism worked. Okay, you guys ready? I'm going to teach you some catechism right now. I want to show you how we do it. And we do scripture basically the same way. It's a repeat after dad kind of process. And continually review, review, review. All right? So let's do, this is probably the easiest section. It only has uh, nine questions. I'll teach them all. Here we go. How many gods are there? Repeat after me. There, now, when I say repeat after me, you mumble along with me even as you hear it for the first time. Okay? It takes some talent to do it, all right? Okay, how many gods are there? Mumble along, please. There is only one God. Very good. It's amazing, isn't it? You didn't do it, but everybody else, you did amazing. So, let's do it again. How many gods are there? There is only one God. Okay, how many persons are there in the one God? Three. The Father, the, the Son, Son, and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Right? What word best describes God? He is holy. Oh, you guys are good. <laughs> this is like the best I've ever heard. That. Okay, let's try that again. How many gods are there? There, there is, is only one God. God. How many persons are there in the one God? Three. The, the Father, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What word best describes God? He, he is, is holy. holy. How old is God? Repeat this after me. He is eternal. eternal. He, he always, always was. was. He always, always will be. be. Let's do that again. How old is God? He, he is eternal. eternal. He, he always was. He always, always will be. be. Now, here are the tricky ones, but I think they're just fun. Where is God? Someone want to try that? Try Stephanie. Where's God? He's everywhere. Everywhere. That's what I put down. Then I ran this past Yuri. Remember this Yuri guy I keep bringing up? He causes more problems in my life. And Yuri handed it back and says, he scratched out everywhere and he says, no, he's everywhere he wants to be. Well, then start thinking about it. Wait a minute. Yeah, you know, it says he departs from places. Remember in the Bible, sometimes he departs. So apparently he wants to be known, I ain't here anymore. I left you people. You deserve to have me leave you. So he's everywhere he wants to be, right? Now you can say, well, yeah, but, well, forget the buts. That's just my answer, okay? I want a different answer, put something else in. Okay, what can God do? <laughs> God can do anything he wants to do. Okay? What does God know? Everything. God knows everything he wants to know. You know what he said one part of scripture? I will remember your sins no more. You know, I love to do this with prisoners. I love to do this with prisoners. I said, guys, what does God know? Everything. You're wrong. Oh, you're so wrong. I just laugh. I said, oh, man, you're so wrong. It says that he will remember your sins no more. Now, some of you guys, I know what you did. And you know what you did. And God, he forgot what you did. Now, is that good news or what? Mm -hmm. If you come to him for forgiveness and repentance and you've turned from your sins... He forgot. All right, here we go. You guys are doing good on this. Let's do it. How many gods are there? There is only one God. How many persons are there in the one God? 
three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What word best describes God? He is, is holy. holy. How old is God? He, he is, is eternal. eternal. He, he always, always was, was. He always will be. Where is God? He is everywhere He wants to be. What can God do? God can do anything He wants to do. What does God know? God knows everything He wants to know. Is there anything more powerful than God? No. <laughs> Good. God is a creator. What did He create? Everything. Why did He create you? So He could love and enjoy me. See? 129 questions. You, you already know nine of them. But that's how you teach them to your children. And they absorb it just like that. They will know those things so fast. And you do scripture the same way. Let's try this one. Let me, let me try one of these scriptures. Um, let me try this one. Repeat after me. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man. Say it with me. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Say it again. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. I was a little late, but that's okay. All right? What version? Yeah, God's version. What do you mean what version? The one Paul wrote. The NIV. I don't care. Use what you want to use, all right? But there you go. That's how we do it. Just repeat after me, repeat after me, repeat after me. And then when you come back the next day, I usually add a phrase or if they're getting good at it and they get better at it. Remember now, memorization comes really quick for a kid. And the more they use that muscle, they'll do it so much faster than dad will. I mean, I guarantee you, the more they use that muscle, so I just come back the next day. Blesses the man who's not walking the kingdom, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Let's do that again. We'll do it, we'll repeat a couple times, and we'll just add in a verse or a half verse every day, and pretty soon, two weeks have gone by, and they know two Psalms, two chapters of the Bible. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. But, but they do it. And so, I think one of the best ways to teach Christian worldview is catechize and scripture memory. And then come back and explain and have fun with it and enjoy it. So, this is something we do once a day and all the way from my 11 year old to my 23 year old, we do this together. My 23 year old knows this is part of our discipleship process. I went through it when I was 14 and 11. And so I'm going to go through it because my brothers are 14 and 11, and it keeps it fresh in his mind as well as everybody else's. So this is done because of biblical literacy. My kids didn't have it. It was my fault, so I made sure they got it. And now they know this thing. I would love... I have it. You do have it. How about I didn't How know that was yours. I have it. Really? Yeah. Where'd you get it? I had it. Um, Miss Frederick acquired it for her class. Um, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It's for children, yeah. Yeah, children's ministry class. She yeah. bought one to make copies. I really. <laughs> it was on the. They were selling it on the GBS bookstore. I really wish I hadn't put this, these words on for, for children, because the prisoners would grub it up. They'd love to do it, and they'd learn a lot from it. We have a John Wesley section in here, uh, that kind of makes it Wesleyan specific. So I think that it's a good stuff, and we do have copies in Spanish.